Your trajectory, dotted line is your line of sight, your solid line is your trajectory, that's the path your bullet takes. We have your near zero, your far zero, your apex, and your max point blank range, the limit of your point blank range. We have your muzzle, or sorry, your muzzle's down here, this is your eye, and then between the muzzle and your eye, we're gonna have a mechanical difference in height between your, uh, your barrel and your sights. We call this sight over bore distance, sight over bore, okay? So at this distance, we're gonna call this your max ordinate height. So this is basic terminology for ballistics. Now this study is called external ballistics, meaning what are the bullets doing in the air? Uh, bullets being a debauchery of the French word bayet, which really means small balls. So this is the study, the science of small balls, okay? Externally flying in the air. When we are working carbine or normal rifle, like material, we're learning the science and the, the martial science of normal rifle craft or carbine craft. We're going to do something known as a BZO, also known as a battle sight zero, a battle zero. And when we BZO, it's an action, it's a, it's a procedure we need to take. We're calibrating the rifle. You have to understand how the rifle's calibrated. Rifles are really easy to use as long as they're properly calibrated. If we look at the Soviet Union or conscript armies, um, AK-47s need a tool to adjust them. Whereas American rifles could be adjusted by hand. Um, well, after the Vietnam War, they could be adjusted by hand. During the Vietnam War, they had to be adjusted with a tool, but the tool was a bullet, okay? So basically, the, the, the more you assume that your conscripts are poorly trained and poorly motivated, the less you want them screwing around with their sights. And the more your troops are highly trained and highly motivated, the more you let them calibrate their own equipment. By the time we're in 1985, we're switching to the A2 series of weapons, it's, we've, gone to, we've gotten rid of the draft, it's all volunteer army at this point, and um, you know, it's a peacetime army, we're doing a lot of shooting competitions, we're spending a lot of time in training, um, and you know, all the scopes and sights can be adjusted by hand. Individual soldiers can adjust their sights. It means you have to train them on how to adjust them and how not to adjust them. But you guys need to learn the process of zeroing your rifle, and this is called a battle zero or battle sight zero that we're gonna be doing today. When we do precision rifle work, so tomorrow's class, you're gonna be controlling your far zero and you're gonna have an infinite number of far zeros. You have a target, it's at 723 meters, you're gonna dial the zero for 723 meters. You're gonna compute a trajectory with math, and you're gonna punch that into your rifle scope, and then you will shoot that trajectory. Um, today, we're gonna to be actually dialing your near zero, and we set it and forget it. And so basically, we're gonna approximate a straight line out of your trajectory, but here's the thing. Do bullets ever fly in a straight line? Negative. Uh, 300 years ago, when we didn't have physics, we didn't have modern science, we didn't have high-speed cameras and rangefinders and lasers and and uh, chronographs, we didn't know these things. And so 300 years ago, people who used guns, they thought that the bullet would go in a straight line until it ran out of gas, ran out of energy, and then it would drop. Like, that's obviously not true. They just didn't know. They just didn't know. But now we know that the bullet is going to fly in a pretty good approximation of a straight line. All right, so if... If we look at this first section right here to here, the very beginning of a trajectory, your, your velocity is high, and so we can approximate this with a straight line. And the farther, farther, farther we go, the more error we're gonna introduce. So the question becomes, what is our acceptable margin of error? So let's suppose we take our assumption that this is a man-sized target, okay? Our margin of error here is we have a man-sized target. Let me see if I can draw a dude, okay? It's gonna be like the men's room. <laughs> cool we have our dude <clears throat> now let's suppose the maximum limit of your point blank range is 350 meters which is typical for the u.s army zero something like that and you're at a distance of 250 meters are you going to hit him oh. well look at the solid blue line Solid blue line says, yes, you are going to hit him, but where are you going to hit him? I'm going to hit high. You're going to hit him relatively high up in the chest, but that's okay. It's acceptable. You're going to hit him, right? Um, and you're aiming relatively low in his body, but you're going to hit him relatively high. That's fine. That's not a big deal. If you move this same dude over here, are you going to hit him at the limit of your point blank range? Yeah. The answer is, yeah, you're going to hit him, but where are you going to hit him? Low. You'll hit him low, okay? So now what if he's right here at 25 meters where you zero? Are you going to hit him? Exactly. Right. The answer is yes, we hit him exactly. And if we're at your far zero, are we going to hit him? The answer is yes, we're going to hit him exactly where we 
want to hit them. Okay, so then the question comes down to what is your acceptable margin of error? Um, for urban fighting, uh, self-defense in and around the home or city environment, if we are talking about um, fighting in urban spaces, a 200 meter zero is pretty good, or 200 yard zero is pretty good. For AR 15s, that corresponds with approximately 50 yard, 200 meter zero for most AR 15s, most AR 15 barrel lengths, most atmospheric and temperature conditions, and most bullets. This is an approximation, okay? Because we're going to control for 50 yard zero, and we're going to approximate for 200 meter zero. But what does this mean? If we are using an AR 15 and we set up for 50 yard zero, 50 yard battle zero, we're only going to get a margin of error of approximately three inches high, three inches low. Again, this is approximate, okay? This is give or take. What does it tell us? That means out to the end of our point blank range, what we define arbitrarily as our acceptable point blank range, it means we can make head size target hits out to about 250 yards, okay? So out to about 250 yards, we'll be able to hit a head size target. Now, why is this important? Number one, in urban fighting, Shelly, Shelly, can you get her on camera? Oh, where are you going, Shelly? Hello, puppy dog. You didn't say hi to me. Hello, hello, dog. Hello, puppy. Here you go. Oh man. Go ahead, go ahead. Come here, come here. You're kicking up a cloud of dust, you silly puppy. I'm so excited. Yeah. There you go, good girl, good girl. All right, so if we're talking about urban environment self-defense, look at that cloud of dust this dog picks up. If we're fighting around cities, we also don't tend to shoot very far. And also our adversary tends to be taking cover around doorways, rooftops, alleyways, windows. Does that make sense? So your target doesn't present himself because in the urban environment, there's a lot of things to hide behind. So we need to be able to make a more precise closer range shot. So if you're gonna set up your weapon for urban fighting or general purpose self-defense in urban areas, a 50 yard zero may be effective. Now if we look at the, um, the some of the pictures that are coming out of Ukraine currently, we'll see these soldiers that have their weapons set to 200 meter zeros. Why? Because their trainers probably told them that for urban fighting, for self-defense in urban cities, they're gonna to set to 200 meters because they're gonna be closer engagement range. Now, if we're going to fight in the battlefield, like if we look at the traditional Cold War, type of fighting, they would zero for farther distances. <laughs> Here's the irony. If we're gonna zero for a farther distance, we have to BZO for a closer distance. Does that make sense? If we bring in our near zero distance, we're gonna launch the bullet up at a higher angle, up in the air. And as those bullets go up in the, higher, in the angle, they're gonna go farther before they cross over again. Okay, so, Let's suppose that this is a 25 meter zero, which is your army zero for M16s and M4. And let's suppose we're talking about civilian zero, a 50 yard zero, which is gonna cross over. Let's call it 200 meters. See what I'm saying? The same trajectory, but we're gonna use less of it. We're gonna approximate it more as a straight line, and it's gonna give us less of a margin of error. So to give you an example, let's assume that this right here is our point blank range. Cut it off at 250 yards. It's going to cross over 200 meters, and we're going to have plus or minus 3 inches. This would be a 50-yard BZO. On the other hand, if we're looking at a 25-meter Army Zero, 25-meter BZO, we're going to be looking at much greater margin of errors you know, so from top to bottom, army targets are 19 inches wide and 39 inches tall, something like that, 40 inches tall, perhaps. They're very tall targets that the army trains on because we're, we're assuming, I mean, memory, industrial complexes like the military are slow to change. They don't change very fast. So they're, they're, they're still stuck in like old, old wars. Um, if we look at COVID, response to COVID, um, segregation, stay indoors, um, you know, social distancing and wearing a mask. This is from Spanish flu. This is from 1918. Like, it's not changed from 1918. If we look at the techniques for BZO, why are we BZOing at 25 meters? Because we're fighting Chinese People's Volunteer Army in Korea during the human wave attacks uh, across open valleys in Korea. So, like, they're still stuck in 1950s. 
the, the way the army zeroes. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying you have to think what is your purpose when you're setting up your zeroing technique. Does that make sense? If we're setting up for close urban fighting, we might zero for 50 yards. If we're setting for fighting the battlefield, we might zero at 25 meters. For you guys, it's up to you to make a decision. I'll give you an example. 1993, the U.S. Army is still training for the Cold War. The whole U.S. Army is built for decades around the Cold War, this concept of nuclear war, around fighting the open steppes of Eastern Europe. So their weapons are zero, the M16s are zero to 25 meters. What that means is they have a significant margin of error at closer ranges. They're gonna miss too high. We go to uh, Somalia for a UN peacekeeping mission and all of a sudden they're finding themselves October 3rd, October 4th, 1993. They're finding themselves in pitched urban battles, street fighting, um, you know, very massive violent street fighting in Somalia, right? In, uh, sorry, in Mogadishu, the capital of Somalia. So you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of enemy combatants firing at them, and the Rangers and the Delta Force are shooting back. And after they shoot at the enemy, they're like, what is wrong with my rifle? What is wrong with this new bullet, the green tip bullet, which was pretty new at the time? They're like, there's something wrong with this because we're shooting the enemy and the enemy is not dying. There's something wrong. Well, what is wrong? How far away are they shooting these combatants in a city, in a ghetto, in a tight, cramped city environment? Close. Close, right? They're shooting combatants at like this distance, 75 yards, let's say. So if you have a 25 meter zero, you're launching these bullets way up in the air. By the time they've reached your 75 yards, here's the dude's head, right? There's your dude's head, he's in a window. He's got his AK-47 sticking out. You look at his head, you aim at his head, bang, 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 you shoot at him, and your bullets are landing high. And your opponent, your opponent he's like, oh shit, I'm being shot at, he ducks. And your American Ranger's like, okay, I got him. Well, 10 seconds later, your bad guy pops up and starts shooting again. And the Ranger's like, what the fuck? He shoots at him, bang, 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 bang. Suppresses him, shoots over his head, and he ducks. The U.S. Army says this is effective because it suppresses the enemy. The, the Ranger is like, why is this guy not dying? Because I'm obviously shooting him. I'm obviously not that bad of a shot. I'm, I should be hitting this target. But the thing is, the U.S. Army is training on man-sized targets that are standing up. And now they're shooting at head-sized targets that are popping out from windows. And so they're hitting high. And because of the BZO, because they're set up for open battlefield, and now they're fighting in a city. See what I'm saying? Because at that time, we hadn't spent much time fighting in cities. Like, we were not, as a military, we were not set up for fighting in cities. The last time we fought in cities was, like, way in 1967 or something like that. You know, uh, I mean, we didn't do a whole lot of city fighting, and we weren't trained and equipped for city fighting. Um, anyways, questions on different zeros? So... That is, um, the BZO depends on the, the distance of, of the barrel and the sight, right? No, not the distance of the barrel. You choose your distance that you want to zero at. I give you two examples, 25 meters and right. 50 yards. Okay. There's also 36 yard zeros, there's 50 yard zeros, there's 100 meter zeros, there's 75 yard zeros. You can zero different distances, but these are the most common. The Army Zero, and so what the Army Zero is and what most civilian schools will teach. Most civilian schools will teach 50 yard zero for AR 15s in this country. Uh, Marine Corps um, nowadays are using a 36 yard zero, uh, but it doesn't matter. The point is, it's the same concept. It's just managing your compromises. All right, so let, let's um, get a little bit more detail on this. Keep filming? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so let's suppose. Hey! Sorry, it's pretty messy in here. Is that all right? All right, so, so this is called holdovers and hold unders. Let's suppose we got our dude. All right, here's your boogeyman. And you're gonna shoot at him. The traditional military way of aiming your rifle in the United States is gonna be aimed for center mass. On a human though, Center mass, one of the reasons why we don't tend to use this in training is because center mass corresponds to the stomach. So what do we know about shots to the stomach, particularly handgun shots to the stomach? Not effective. But not, effective. In in not effective. Not effective. Yeah. Shots to the stomach, particularly with handgun wounds, not effective. Okay, But in the military, you're using a rifle, so the rifle's more powerful, right? So you can do more damage. And if you shoot here, you're gonna hit the liver. If you hit the liver with a rifle bullet, oh man, you're gonna fuck up someone's day. Um, also, people are hiding behind rocks and bushes and trees. 
So you want to shoot for the middle of whatever you can see. Try not to get that much resolution. Because remember, if you're at 400, 500, 600 meters away, you're not going to be able to aim for their heart. So in the context of rifle gunfighting, the normal place we start aiming is called center mass. But for self-defense work with a pistol, particularly with a pistol, we're going to aim center chest. So if we're doing CQB work, close quarter battle work, and if your opponent is not wearing armor, we're going to aim center chest. Particularly when we're dealing with handguns or handgun cartridges. Because they're weaker, we have to be up in the heart and the major blood vessels around the heart. Having said that, if you look at the Soviet Union, they actually taught their troops to aim for Santa Claus's belt buckle. Right? Because Eastern European uniforms have a big belt buckle and a big external belt in their uniforms. They wanted to aim for the belt buckle. Why would you aim for the belt buckle? This is actually called a hold under. Hold under. Now, if you look at your rifle, you see that the rifle uh, barrel is below the sights by you know, about this much, depending on your rifle. AR-15 is going to be 2.6 inches between the barrel and your, uh, your eye, your, your sights. And again, because your face is only so big on a normal human, all these rifles are going to be pretty similar. Like two days ago, I was working with a little lady here. She's really small. So like her face is just not that big, and so she has a hard time. She, she can't, if she puts her face on the gun, she actually can't aim. She has to actually pick her head up a little bit. And that leads to poor shooting because you have tension in your neck. Because again, this was made with the assumption that a man's face is a certain size. Anyways, so all modern rifles and submachine guns are built upside down. In other words, the barrel is low and the sights are high. So if we want to shoot somebody in the middle of the face, we actually have to aim for the forehead. This is called a hold over, okay? Hold over, hold under. Now, let's, let's for example, look at our AK-47. We zero at 100 meters, then we set it to the battle zero setting. Once you set the battle zero setting, it's going to be approximately 250 meters, give or take. So that means at about 250 meters, you're going to be dead on. But remember, that bullet's going to drop down to 250 meters, so that at close range, really close range, where are you going to be? If you shoot them at like 20 meters, where are you going to be hitting? If you aim for low. the belt buckle. But low. No, you'll hit the belt buckle. Right? Because think about the trajectory. We've got to cross over, then we're going to go up, and then we we'll come back down. So at 20 meters, give or take, we're going to hit the belt buckle if we aim at the belt buckle. At 250 meters, we're also going to hit the belt buckle. And as we start working our way in on the trajectory, then we're going to hit higher, higher, higher. So it's going to apex up here in the middle. So you can just conceptually approximate this. Your apex is going to be roughly, hey, Chum, can you hold on that? Chum. Hold on, we're filming. So if you approximate 60% of your distance, this is going to be where your apex is, roughly. So let's suppose that we're shooting a distance of 250 yards. Sorry, 250 meters. Where is 60% of that? 210. Hmm? Oh, okay. 150. Half would be 125 meters. Yeah. A little bit more than half. About 140, 150 meters, right? So about 150 meters, you're going to be super high. And then as you go towards from 150 meters, 200 meters, you know, it's going to be 200 meters is going to be right here. 250 meters is back there. Now, if you come less than 150 meters, so like 100 meters is here, 75 meters is here, and 50 meters is here. Do we see that? So it's like 20 some meters, 50 meters, 75 meters, 100 meters, 150 meters, 175, 200 uh, and then, you know, 225, 250, and then we're 300 meters down here in the legs. This is called a battle zero for a reason, because if you aim for the belt buckle using Soviet methodology, using Soviet Union's um, training doctrine for AK-47 and anything similar, if you aim low, called a hold under, you're going to be able to hit in the target someplace, and you'll hit most of the time above where you're aiming. We don't generally teach this. Why? The problem is holding under in urban self-defense leads to you gut shooting people. If you gut shoot them, what happens? Well, it's not combat effective. Look at body armor. Why does body armor only cover certain areas that are above the diaphragm? It's because shooting in the guts, yeah, it sucks to get your guts blown out of you. I've seen it happen, not on human, but I've seen it happen on pigs where the guts are just going all around. But like that pig was very alive when it had its guts going six feet, 10 feet behind it. It was screaming its head off and it was running at full speed and dragging its guts on the ground. Having AK-47 round go through its guts from one side, just everything come out the other side. It was gross. 
but it was very alive and very functional, very combat effective. All right. So <clears throat> for urban self-defense, we're going to hold center chest at close range, or we're going to hold forehead at very close range. If you need to take a high precision shot, you know, you, we talked about the hostage shot. Um, don't shoot your hostages. All right. <laughs> But we, we call them the hostage shot in training. And, uh, you know, so for most self-defense, you're going to aim center chest or forehead at close ranges. But at battlefield distances, you're going to aim center mass and we'll zero the rifles accordingly. And as we go into, if you want to learn how to use AK-47s or 300 blackout or, you know, low velocity rifles like this, or we're going to use, um, you know, like if you go into sniper sniper training or SPR school, we, we teach a program here called Special Purpose Rifle School, where you learn to get really, really fast, really fast engagements out to 500 meters without making any adjustments to the scope. We're not going to teach this tomorrow, but yeah, that would be hold for the pelvis. Set to 400 meters, hold for pelvis. Anyways, neither here nor there. Notice that, let's suppose you're beyond your point blank range and your bullets starting to drop too far that we're no longer on the target. So if you aim for the center, if you aim for the center, let me give you an example here. Forget the belt buckle now. Yes, puppy. Yes, puppy dog. Yes, puppy dog. So if we talk about um, aiming center mass, and you have your AR-15 with your you know 16-inch barrels, your 55 green bullets, and you're zeroed for 50 yards and 200 meters. Most common zero for American civilian schools teaching AR-15. Most common rifle length, most common bullet type, M193, full metal jacket. You're going to be right in the middle. That means that when you apex, tell me apex is going to be 60% of that distance. So let's those were zeroed at 200 meters. What is our apex? 120. All right, give or take, give or take, right? You're going to be three inches high, give or take. Okay, so at the end of your point blank range, 250, you're going to be three inches low, give or take. 250 yards. So this is about 150 yards, and this is about 250 yards. All right, pretty acceptable. And add a little bit of slop, add a little bit of wind, add a little bit of shakiness because you're breathing hard. You're gonna stay within center chest zone or a center head zone for any sort of urban fighting or self-defense you need. The problem is you have to set up for 50 yards zero. And the bigger distance, the more distance we need to zero for it, we got to walk back and forth and set up the targets. It just takes more time. And in fact, you can get a really good quality zero without going to 50 yards. So, if we look at this trajectory, um, let me redraw this. So you'll be able to see it better. Picasso, I'll autograph this. You guys can pay me big bucks later. Okay, your zero di distance is 50 yards. Your near zero, your far zero is gonna be 200 meters or 220 yards. Here's your muzzle or your eye and your muzzle. What if, in the interest of convenience, because BZOs are designed for convenience. How can you teach a lot of people very quickly, very efficiently on a small facility? We're gonna shoot only at 25 yards. 25 yards. Can we zero a 50 yard zero, but at a 25 yard distance? How do you do it? So you expect to hit low. Exactly. And you approximate how much you gotta hit low by. Exactly, exactly, right? Remember, BZOs are designed to be sloppy. They're designed to be good enough to hit an man-sized target out to 400 meters, and that's it. They don't need to be perfect. They will not be perfect by the definition of a BZO. Like, no BZO is perfect. It's an approximation. It's an average. Okay, so we we're doing approximation. Good enough. And in fact, you can zero very, very well at 25 yards with a 50-yard zero and be totally fine out to 300 yards. And if you're beyond 300 yards, you're going to have to hold over a little bit. So what we're going to do... Look at this distance right here. On an AR-15, is 2.6 inches. Brian, does the distance matter uh, based on your optic mounting? Yes. So if you have like a 
riser on your yes. head dock? Okay. If you have a riser for night vision use, for head up, you know, fast competition shooting, if you have a piggyback red dot like on an RMR on top of ACOG, uh. piggyback optics, or if you're using a rifle like a Tavor, or if you're using an AK-74, AK-47 where the scope is mounted taller, then this is different. Right, but you can compute this for each of your rifles. If you want to compute this, I can help you with it. I'm, I'm happy to help you with it. But the concept is the same. So anyways, if we have a 2.6 inch height over bore distance, and we're going to be dead center, point of aim equals point of impact at 50 yards, then at 25 yards, we're going to be low. Do we see this line right here? This is where we're looking and aiming. This is where we're hitting. <coughs> so we're going to hit a little bit low, but by how much? Though? How much low? three inches. How do you know? It's half the, the distance. Ta-da! No bullet flies in a straight line, right? Bullets are always in an arc. Having said that, this bullet is going so fast, the time that it takes to pass through this short distance of 25 yards is so short, the time is so short, that at this point we can pretty much negate any effects of gravity. We can pretend that gravity doesn't have an effect on it. And if gravity doesn't have an effect on it, well then we can approximate this curve as a straight line, right? That means if we draw a straight line right here, it's gonna cross over half the distance. Half this distance, 1.3 inches. Bam, 1.3 inches. Actually, we're gonna be 1.1 inches low. The actual distance between our theoretical, what we estimated, and the actual uh, you know, realistic result is only, it's negligible, it's a 0.2 inch distance at this, it's not a big deal. So in reality, though, it's going to be at 1.1 inches low. 1.1 inches low. But you see the concept here. If we shoot at 25 yards, you aim for the middle of the target, and then you adjust your sights to hit 1.1 inches low, you're going to now have a 50-yard zero for an AR-15. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. This allows us to very quickly and very easily set up a zero without needing a really big shooting range. And it's good enough to hit man-sized targets out to 400 yards. We good with that? Questions? Okay, so let's take a break. Kill that.